507 now on KRMG. I'm Skyler Cooper being Tuesday and at 507. That means it's time for the BA Breakdown. We check in with our friends in Broken Arrow. City Manager Michael Spurgeon joins us live. And Michael, I sure hope you've been able to stay indoors all day. Yes, I have, Skyler. It has uh, definitely a hot one out there, and it doesn't look like it's going to uh, let up any time for the next couple of weeks. So I just encourage everybody in the region and specifically Broken Arrow to stay indoors where they can and be safe because it's dangerous. We're covering stories today from all around Green Country, Bixby, and Skytook, where uh, they're calling for water conservation. Obviously, there's a whole different thing happening in Bixby, but I noticed that uh, Broken Arrow also sort of doing the th- the same thing, asking people just to conserve, and specifically um, because demand is up, and maybe you don't want people out there watering their lawn every night. Tell us the purpose of that. Well, our water treatment plant can actually produce uh, safely between 29 and 30 million gallons of water a day, probably closer to 30. We've got a great, great uh, utility staff. Um, I can tell you is that right now we're producing a little over 25 million gallons of water per day, and that's double what we did in early May. And so we're at about, I would say, close to 78 to 80 percent of our capacity. And so we're watching it very closely, and we feel pretty comfortable that where we're at in terms of being able to reduce, I mean, to produce the water. But however, I am sending out a Robo called all of our customers uh, today and tomorrow, probably just asking them to be mindful. First and foremost, just don't check on your neighbors. Also, check on our furry family members, our, our cats and dogs. I mean, they need water and keep them out of the heat if possible. And also, is that if you know to voluntarily just keep in mind the importance of maybe watering your lawn every other day or just other conservation measures measures that they could take. Because, um, like I said, we're in good shape, but once again, we're not looking at any significant uh, rain for the next couple of weeks. And so we just want to be diligent in in letting our folks know where we're at. We're not having any problems with our water plant production, uh, but it's always good to, to let people know what's going on because they may be having a question. And as a reminder, you and I have talked about this before, but um, at least at probably one point each summer in Broken Arrow, people get a little bit of a brown color in their water. I experienced that um, last week, but only just very briefly. It was maybe one time I noticed it, I had to redo some laundry, but for the most part, it's been okay. Uh, remind us why that happens occasionally and, and what you do to respond to it. Well, that does happen during the summer, especially when it's very hot because the demand for, for water goes up. And when there's an, a, a, a significant increase in the amount of water, we have to put more water into the system. And when you do that, you try to do it in such a way it's called feathering to where you move it into the system slow but not real fast because when you move the water into the system into our pipes uh, quickly, it can cause sediment that's built up on the pipe or at the bottom of the pipe to actually get stirred up into the pipe there's no problem with the quality of the water it just there's a brown tint to it sometime fortunately this summer we've done a great job chuck vokes and the utility department done a great job Uh, but we've had about 10 customers that have called in and expressed some concern about that and the first thing we do to tell them is number one let their water run for a little bit because once again uh, that sediment has been stirred up and to let us know where they live because we'll come out and we'll flush the hydrants a little bit which will help the situation but there's not any concern it's it just happens when I think all systems experience this when you have this type of demand. All right, let's move on from that and talk about uh, something that I would imagine other businesses in Broken Arrow could uh, not necessarily benefit from, but help folks who live there. And that's the closure of Baker Hughes. About 170 people worked at that, uh, or still do, but uh, maybe sometime in the future will need work. Are there things the city is thinking about, maybe pointing to some other employers for those folks that work at Baker Hughes, which is now closing? Well, that's a great question. They'll actually be finishing up their orders and, and closing their plants, unfortunately, sometimes in the next spring, and they'll start actually reducing their workforce, I understand, next February. It's a company has been around for some time, I think close to 50 years. So anytime a business, albeit a retail or commercial or a manufacturer closed, it's a sad day in your community. And we were very um, disappointed to hear about the business decision that they had to make. And, you know, so we have 170 folks approximately that are going to be need, need to look for uh, a position. So we're going to work through our Chamber of Commerce and our Economic Development Corporation. Uh, they have a career and workforce center and that we're going to be offering uh, those folks at Baker Hughes 
to get information to them about uh, jobs that are opening, helping them with some career counseling, referrals to other businesses that may be uh, looking for for employees. And so uh, Jennifer Conway and her team, they do a great job with the, uh, the workforce development programs we have. And I think we're going to have a job fair probably in the next 30 to 45 days. And so those that uh, will be looking for position, there may be opportunities right now. And so I think it's our responsibility when there is something like this, unfortunately, that happens is that we jump on it quickly and be what I call reactively proactive now that we know about it. Because sometimes you don't know about these things until uh, the last minute. So now what do you do? We're not going to sit around and be disappointed for very long because uh, Broken Era is a great place and lots of opportunities, I think, to, to, for people to go to work. And it's our responsibility to try to, to create that network, networking opportunity for people to get together and hopefully find a new position. I saw something that happened in Broken Arrow last week I want to ask you about. That was the fentanyl forum held by the uh, police department and other city leaders and first responders. Uh, we've covered countless stories from local and national about this uh, this rise in fentanyl. It's a big problem. And in Broken Arrow, I guess you said uh, to be reactive. That's kind of what this was, right? It was. Um, our chief of police, Brandon Berryhill, who does an amazing job and has a great leadership team, uh, came to, to myself and to Norm Stephen, the assistant city manager over at the police department, and said there are some concerns with the number of overdoses that are happening in the region and specifically in Broken Arrow. Uh, for example, we had about 180-some overdoses in 2021. And right now we're at about 120 just through June. And so unfortunately there may be an increase in what we saw over last year. And so he recommended that we create this forum made up of a panel of uh, experts about the effects of fentanyl. And what our goal is going to be is to provide more education to our community and, and hope those in the region will follow to talk about the deadliness of, of, of this drug and, and getting people the, the awareness they need that what it actually can do. And so this was the first step of what we're going to do is implement a series of public service announcements. I know the council members are going to be very supportive of this to just make sure our community is aware. And if we have to be anywhere, any place, anytime to talk about the effects or the deadliness of, of this drug, we will certainly do so. But I, I give Chief Barry Hill tremendous credit for stepping out there and, and starting this campaign that we want to do in our community. Michael Spurgeon, the city manager in Broken Arrow, the BA Breakdown, every Tuesday right here on the KRMG Evening News. Michael, thank you and stay cool. You too, my friend. See you next week.